So this story is about love, lust, betrayal, jealousy, loss, gain, new beginnings. And in order to take you to where we're going, I have to kind of take you back and give you context as to where all of this started. So Vanessa and Amara are very good friends. Ladies, you know those type of friends you have where everything significant, big and small, that happens in your life, actually significant being big, and then the small things that happen, this is the person you have to call. If a family member annoys you, you're calling this person. If something amazing at work happens, you're calling this person. If you meet a guy, you are calling this person. That's your friend. So that's who Amara and Vanessa are. So this one particular day, they decide we're going for brunch. In fact, that's what they always did. Saturday was brunch time. And of course, true to brunch fashion, there is no brunch without champagne. How you doing? Mm, 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 mm. So they decide to go for a champagne brunch on a Saturday. And they get their particular spot that they like. Now, at this particular restaurant, the style and vibe of it is, if you can think of the vibe at, for example, Morningside Shopping Center, where all the restaurants are kind of facing the car park and you have a view of what's going on because it's glass. So they're sitting at a restaurant like that on the far end of the restaurant where they've got a very clear view of the car park. Anybody coming in and out, they can see it. So this time they go for brunch and they hear this really loud noise. Now, of course, big boy vehicles make those type of noises. Like we all know the noise I'm talking about. So they hear this noise. And of course, they're not the only ones looking to see what's going on. Everybody in that restaurant, well, pretty much everybody's looking because this car is making a noise. It's making them things. So they look out into the car park. They see somebody parking a G-Wagon and out steps this really, really, really good looking guy. Like very good looking. He's dapper, he's sexy, he's clean, his haircut is on point, all of that, like really sexy. And they notice that he is in such a rush. Like he's not even trying to look, he's not even aware that people are looking at him like that. He's just trying to get to where he's getting, where he's going. And it happened to be the same restaurant that they were at having brunch. So he rushes towards the restaurant and he's shown to his seat and it becomes apparently clear that he's there for a meeting. He's there to meet another gentleman. And he just so happened to get a seat or a table not too far from Vanessa and Amara. So you guys know how when a foreign guy comes in the vicinity and you and your girl are looking at each other like, mm -hmm. like he's foreign, he's foreign, he's pop, like he's foreign, he's foreign. And they're kind of looking at each other like, okay and he comes he sits down and him and his business partner are having a conversation and this that and the other and they were like okay now at this point they're on their first bottle of champagne they're picking at they're picking at like foods but they're still waiting for their main main breakfast dish so they're sitting there talking having champagne and this guy kind of settles in and now he's able to kind of take in his surroundings and he just so happens to a note he just so happens to notice Amara and Vanessa and their table so he kind of like smiles over at Amara and she just so happened to really have or be in his line of sight Vanessa's not so much she was sitting at an angle but as soon as she realized that this guy was kind of checking the table out she positioned herself in a way that she could also be properly seen so anyway they decide whatever let's just keep on doing our brunch thing he's having a meeting it's whatever they get their main dish and maybe 30 minutes after that the waiter comes with another bottle of champagne and it's like the gentleman over there asked for us for me to drop this bottle of champagne um and with this note so he gives it specifically to amara so amara reads it and it's basically uh to the pretty lady reading this letter this note um i'm my name is prince um i would love to come over and greet you guys but unfortunately i'm in a meeting but hopefully we could link up another time um please enjoy your bottle of champagne and your brunch so mara's now like giggling because i mean when a foreign brother 
Just like you giggle, like what else are you gonna do? So she's giggling and she takes the note and they kind of just like, you know, when somebody buys your bottle, kind of. He laughs. She they open. The, she carries on drinking with her friend. And Vanessa kind of makes the comment, I wonder which one of us he's feeling. And at that point, Amara's like, she's not even here to argue with her friend or they haven't even met this guy. Anyway, she takes Prince's number. They have their brunch and they end up leaving. So when they leave, an hour after, she texts Prince and she's just like, hey, this is the lady from this restaurant. Um, as you see, we've left. I don't know if you're still at the restaurant. Hope your meeting was productive. This is my number. Take care. And within an hour, he texts her back and he says, yes, just wrapping up my meeting, actually. Um, I would love if we could all go and hang out somewhere, just like meet properly. I'm actually going to meet with my boys after this. Maybe you can come with your friend and we can all go somewhere for dinner later. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. She asks Vanessa, Vanessa is game time. She's just like, let's go. Let us go. So she says, cool, let's go. They go back to Amara's house because it's not too far from that place and they were going to go and chill there anyway. They chill, they relax, and then they start getting ready um, for dinner. It was going to be an early dinner. He goes back to his place. He calls his boy up. They get ready. This, the, the other, give details, meet at the restaurant. Amara goes there being very modest because she's that type of person, relatively modest, pencil skirt, pencil dress, polar neck vibes, obviously tight fitted, showing her body. And Vanessa is just like, look, I'm cute. Like, I'm cute. I'm going to wear my mini skirt. I'm going to wear my high heels um, and show my legs. And so she does. And when she gets to the dinner, she's being overtly sexy and sexual and not trying to hide the fact that she's really interested and she also is feeling prince now you know how it goes when you go with a friend for dinner or lunch whatever it is and you're going there just to cover that person you're kind of third wheeling although technically it's not third wheeling because there's somebody else but you're you're that extra wheel there are going to be side conversations between the actual people that brought you together and that's when you and that person's friend have to connect so it was like a private conversations and then a four-way conversation and private conversations and it was very clear that amara and prince had this chemistry that was like whoa 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 these two are really hitting it off and without wasting any time they had this thing going for a year and a half occasionally they would invite their friends but most of the time they spend time together intimately alone doing their own things getting to know each other and that was happening for a year and a half eventually prince has a work or business trip coming up to abu dhabi and he decides to bring amara along because hey why not just turn this into a mini vacation as well so amara takes time off work she's like oh hell yeah no i'm going i'm going so she goes with him to abu dhabi they're having such an amazing time and again her and vanessa her and vanessa are those friends who are always talking hey b how you doing her and vanessa uh, vanessa are, are those friends who are always talking so vanessa um is messaging her messaging her messaging her messaging her calling her calling her calling her and like what's going on what are you guys doing this that and the other this that and the other and eventually she's like babe i'm coming back amara's like i'm coming back soon we'll talk when i get back i just want to enjoy the rest of my vacation eventually they come back after this amazing trip like nine day trip just enjoying the luxury the ambience the everything they come back and she immediately calls Vanessa and she's like we need to meet for brunch like we need to go for brunch I need to tell you all about my trip I need to keep like find out what's been going on with you like let's go so they find a brunch spot they go obviously bubbles are involved all of that all of that all of that but this time the energy is kind of different now Vanessa is kind of planting ideas in Amara's head like I get that he took you on this trip and all of that, but, you know, if he really loved you, why haven't you gone 
to his country like why isn't he taking you back home how do you know that he is not married he doesn't have kids like what's popping you need to, you, these are the questions you need to ask and Amara is like listen we're not there yet when we get there we get there and we'll do the ting ting but right now we're not there so i'm not even concerned about that i i've been with this guy for over a year um him having a wife and kids like that would be very strange because then he's clearly kept it a secret so she's like whatever eventually amara needs the bathroom so she goes before she goes vanessa asks her can i please borrow your phone um i don't have air time so she's like yeah sure babe yeah da -da 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 -da. here's my phone she goes to the bathroom now when amara is in the bathroom vanessa does the damn thing the thing you're not supposed to to do she goes through the phone book and she takes prince's number two days after brunch she texts prince oh thank you so much for taking care of my my friend she really had an amazing trip she told me all about it and he's like oh no you she's very welcome i love her that's my baby of course i'm going to take her places and you know take care of her and spoil her and this that and the other and vanessa's finding other things to say so they kind of have a back and forth but in prince's mind it's innocent this is my girlfriend's best friend and of course i'm going to tell her about this conversation so he tells her later that day that oh by the way uh vanessa messaged me and amara's already like hmm? how did she get your number and he was like baby i don't know did you not give her my number i assumed you gave her my number um yeah she texts me and she was like no i did not give her your number but okay cool i'll address this when i see her now her intention was to address it sometime during the week but unfortunately she had a business trip coming up and she was unable to address it when she thought she could address it. So she thought, you know what, I'm not going to stress myself too much. We'll talk when I get back. So she goes on this business trip. She's off to Cape Town. Now, just to give you guys a bit of context as well, Amara is in the PR space. She's head of her department. She is a boss boss. She's the woman who when they have events, when like any media events, when they have big clients, whatever it is, they bring Amara in. She's that woman. And so this particular time, she has to fly out to Cape Town to represent. So she goes to Cape Town and the whole time she's there, she's speaking with her man. Um, she notices Vanessa's a bit distant but, she, distant, but she's speaking to her man. And she's like, baby, I'm going to be back in a couple of days. And he's like, okay, cool. Baby, on Saturday, Cause she left about friday he was like tomorrow i'm going to be going to the club with my boys this that and she's like okay enjoy just be safe whatever so fast forward fast forward fast forward amara comes back from her business trip it's a saturday morning she's been in cape town for a couple of days and she knows her man all too well she arrives in the morning her, pl her plane lands in the morning and she knows her man too well she knows he's going to want to come to the house he's going to want to be cooked for all of that so she decides when i get back i'm going to drop my bags and just do a bit of grocery shopping so i can cook and relax because i'm not leaving the house i'm tired so she goes to a shopping complex close to her place she shops she gets what she needs and on her way out she runs into a mutual friend now mutual being vanessa her vanessa i'm saying vanessa i've been thinking about this my friend for so long vanessa so she runs into a friend that her and Vanessa know. So, okay. She's like, hey, how you doing, boo? How you doing? How you doing? And her friend is like, oh my gosh, where have you been? I feel like it's been forever. They're doing a little catch up. Ladies, you know how we are. When we, ca when we need to catch up, we need to catch up, catch up. If we need to push our trolleys into a corner and talk, that's what we're going to do. In the car park, in the shopping complex, in the actual store, we're catching up. So they push their trolleys to the side and they're catching up, talking, ki 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 ki. And she's like, by the way, I saw Vanessa. Now it makes sense. Now that you're telling me about this business trip, because I was wondering where you were. I saw Vanessa out during the weekend and she, baby girl, was lit. She was having an amazing time. She was with these guys, really sexy guys. And she was doing the most. She was laughing like, oh, Vanessa was out there. Uh, Vanessa was out there with her skirt. Yeah. Yeah, 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 dancing. At some point, her skirt went up, this, that, and the other. And we were just laughing. It was a good time, but I didn't go over because I was with my own people. And yeah, we just kind of greeted each other from across the club. 
and um, she was like, oh, um, and then I didn't really see her. I only saw the guy who she kissed that night at the club. Um, she was like, the homeboy was sexy. He was sexy. And I, 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 I saw him when he was leaving the club and he was just so turned up and I noticed him because his boy was saying, you're not driving, you're gonna get into the passenger seat or into the back seat and I'm driving. And she was like, homeboy had to be pushed into his G wagon, like this was a joke, like homeboy was Liddy. And she's already like, G wagon? But in her mind, she's thinking, I can't make assumptions. I can't make assumptions. Prince is not the only one who owns a G-Wagon. A G so being Paco P.I., you know how, how us ladies are. When we feel something's not quite right, we start to ask the, you know, certain type of questions to, you know. The more questions she asks, the more she realizes that this is sounding a lot like Prince. Have you guys ever been in a situation where the man you're in a relationship with, the man you love or really like, has gone somewhere he wasn't supposed to go? He's with somebody he's not supposed to be with. He's gone to a place he was not supposed to go. Like, have you ever had that that sick, anxious, quarter to rage feeling where you're like, mm -mm, I'm not liking this? She puts two and two together. And it occurs to her that that was Prince. That was Prince that Vanessa kissed. That was Prince. There's no, that was Prince. That was Prince. And now she's holding herself together because she can't look like a punk and she can't, look, she's holding herself together, but it's building inside of her and she's getting teary eyed and she's just like, babes, I've got to go. I just got back. I'm really tired. Let's catch up another time. She unpacks her groceries before, like she didn't even have the strength to put the key in the ignition. Immediately she dialed Prince up and she started shouting. So you kissed my friend this weekend. And she's screaming and just his sigh like that. Oh gosh, like she, she knows it's true. She knows it's true. This is not even a question anymore. This is me confronting you for your filth. And he's panicking. He's baby, please, 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 please. Let me explain. Where are you? This, that, and the other. She's screaming. She's shouting. She's, she bursts into tears. She rushes back to her house. Within minutes of her getting home, Prince pulls up too. Like he's been driving like a bad out of hell, trying to get to her place. He pulls up and she's left the groceries in the car. She's gone up to her pop. She's freaking out. He gets there, he comes up and he's trying to explain. He's, he's, he's quoted to, like, he cannot even hold himself together. He is just like, oh, please, baby, please listen to me. Please hear me out. This is what happened. And he's trying to explain. He's trying to explain. He's trying to explain. She doesn't want to hear a damn thing. You kiss my friend, point blank, and the period. He is so desperate to be heard and to tell his side of the story. But she's, she's in such pain. She's like, give me your phone. No, no, give me your phone. I want to see your phone. Give me your phone. And she notices that the only messages they have are from that conversation he told her about before she left. So now she's wondering, did you delete conversation? Like, what is this? And he's like, I didn't delete anything. I swear, I swear on my life. And she throws her, his phone back at him and she's like, get out. Get, just go, get out, get out. And he's baby, please, please, you don't understand. And she's like, go, just go before I call security. And he ends up leaving and he's so pressed. Like he's so in his feelings. He knows he messed up. He just wants an opportunity to, to explain how it all went down. He leaves. And Amara is pissed. She's livid, but she knows her friend. She knows Vanessa's the type who gets drunk, does foolish things, and then starts to cry and starts feeling. Uh -uh. So she knows the only way she can address the situation is when, if she sees, when she sees Vanessa face to face. And her being distant and quiet is obviously because she knows what she's done. So she decides on Tuesday, the following Tuesday, remember it's Saturday, on Tuesday there's a friend's lunch, dinner and she's going to go and she knows Vanessa's going to be there. So Tuesday comes. Tuesday comes and Amara tells herself she's going to go there looking beautiful. She goes there looking the damn part, looking hella sexy with her ruby woo, red lips and with a figure hugging dress, high heels, earth thing, and Vanessa happens to be there. And Vanessa greets her kind of, she is feeling a bit awkward, but it's still like, hey boo, how are you doing? How was your trip? And she's like, good, good, good. 
they're all chilling it's mutual friends eventually as the dinner goes on she says to vanessa can i please see you outside so she goes outside to vanessa she goes outside with vanessa and they start talking and she tells vanessa i, I know what happened i know what happened i know what you did i know what you and prince did and vanessa starts crying amara's like vanessa vanessa you shouldn't be crying you cheated or oh, my man cheated with you you kissed my man not the other way around so why are you crying and vanessa's like you don't understand it was a mistake we all turned she was like vanessa i know you enough to know your behavior and i love you but this is not okay you've crossed the line you've hurt me and i'm not doing this with you i want you to know that i know and she goes back inside because she acknowledges this is not the time to have a full-blown conversation. She goes back inside. Now her phone is on the table, face up. So the whole time she's there, Prince is blowing up Amara's phone. Blowing it up, blowing it up, blowing it up. Now, at some point, Vanessa notices. She sees the phone flashing. She looks at the screen and she sees Prince. And now there's a bit of unexpected jealousy and hurt that wow since me and this nigga hooked up he's never said anything and here he is blowing up his girl's phone he clearly wants her it's, it's all about her i'm just gonna leave so she leaves the dinner she leaves the dinner and eventually the dinner comes to an end amara leaves too when she gets back to a complex because of course she took an uber you know we're not out here drinking and driving um as soon as she gets to a complex the booty at the gate says uh prince came by and she's just like whatever whatever she gets back to the apartment he's still calling she doesn't answer two days after that princess best friend calls amara and says i need to take you out for brunch we need to go and i need to talk to you and she agrees and they go out and he explains that's not what you think happened is not quite how it happened yes they were all drinking yes they were all very um they're all adults. They all have to take accountability. But there was no pre-conversations or us linking up with Vanessa when you were out of town. It really was a situation where we happened to be at the same place. Because it's your best friend, she came to the table to greet. I offered her a bottle of champagne with her girl. She sat there. They drank. We all got really twisted. And then her and Prince shared a kiss. And... You know how us women are we need to know everything like who initiated the kiss who 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 and she was like okay to be very honest with you vanessa kissed him and after it happened it happened so quickly after it happened it was like this whoa 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 and not too long after that i said like let's call it a night we need to go home this is too much and so we went home and she was like okay thank you for letting me know i still don't care him and i are done i, I cannot speak to him and so they leave it at that now a week two weeks pass prince is still doing the blowing up of the phone but now remember baby girl had gone to cape town for a trip and what she wasn't able to come home and tell her man her ex now was that everything went so well that they want me to fly out to the uk um branch and do some work there we are trying to relaunch that branch and or that department and yeah i'm the I'm, I'm going and so through the grapevine prince hears that amara is leaving to go to the uk and she's still not answering his calls so amara decides to host a little see you soon dinner for her friends because she knows she's leaving she knows this is an amazing opportunity she, she, so she hosts this dinner for her friends and Vanessa's not invited. At this time, their friends know what's gone down. Vanessa's not invited. She just wants something very peaceful, very, you know, about her. So she has this dinner, and it's like the ambiance is sexy. Balloons everywhere, sushi, champagne, just that whole vibe. Like, baby girl is leaving. So she's at the restaurant talking with her friends, Kiki King, laughing, chats, having a good time. When out the corner of one of her friend's eyes, this guy spots Prince and he's like, um, Prince is approaching 
and Amara kind of turns her head and sees Prince coming. And she's already like, and Prince comes to the table. Now Prince is with his best friend. Prince comes to the table and he greets everybody at the table and he greets Amara and he's like, how are you? Um, I bought you a gift. So he hands her the gift and the flowers and she's like, cool. And he was like, um, do you mind if we talk? And she says, okay, we can talk. So they go outside onto the balcony. It's a rooftop vibe. They go outside and she's like, what's up? And he tells her again, I'm so sorry. Like he's trying so hard to apologize and let her know like none of this was his intention. Like, please, baby, please listen to what I have to say. This, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like I cannot say it enough. I'm sorry, there's no excuse. I love you. Please don't do this. And she's just like, Prince, there's nothing you can say at this point. On top of that, I'm about to leave for the UK. So whatever this is, time out. I, I don't even want to deal with this. This is my night. And he says, I, I respect that. Is there any way that I can stay here and maybe take you home after? And she's like, that's fine. If you want to stay, cool. So he stays. They have the dinner. Um, it's a little awkward, but everybody's trying to be respectful because they know there's love there. These two love each other. These two love each other. Um, eventually, the dinner ends and Prince takes Amara home. And he asks if he can come up and she says no. Um, she needs her space. And again, he tries to apologize and she's like, I've heard you. I've heard what your boy said. I've heard what Vanessa said. I'm good. I don't want to hear this anymore. I, I, I just, I can't do this. I need my space. I, I can't keep doing this with you. And he's broken. He is so broken. And he says, okay, well, how long are you thinking of going to the UK? And she was like, at this point, depending on how things go, I might relocate and now homeboy is panicking inside but there's nothing he can say he can't even be mad at her for considering this because he's effed up like he's completely effed up so he keeps quiet i need to check myself so he keeps quiet and he's like okay cool um can i take you to the airport is there any way I can be the one to take you to the airport? And she says, cool, that's not a problem in a couple of days. And so he does. He comes, he fetches her from her apartment. He takes her to the airport and he holds her. He just holds her and he holds her. And he's so emotional, like tears are in his eyes. And he's saying, Amara, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I love you so much. Like, please, I don't know what to say. And she says... Prince, you need to let me go. You need to let me go. It's done. 